Mr. Mayor, Rudy Giuliani well, joins us. You, all. you had some there. reaction there with the flip of the police officer <laughs> and the truck driver. Well, I guess I feel sorry for the, tr for the trooper getting caught like that, but I guess it's justice. Um, cops make, mis make mistakes, too, and uh, he really got them good. Yeah, human moment there that we got to <laughs> see. He backed off. Though. He did. Yeah. He, did. He, showed, he, showed, he showed he knew how to make an adjustment. Mm. Sure. Uh, like, our, like our president. Yeah, well, let's you know talk what? about adjustments. <laughs> the he president, make adjustments to reality. The president has had a really bad week. Hmm. Uh, why is it? It's been years. <laughs> okay. well, well, you look at the Supreme Court yesterday with Hobby Lobby, years. the SEIU oh, thing, oh, mean, yeah, the NLRB I mean, this is, thing last week. But uh, this has been coming for a long time. I mean, he uh, this whole this whole idea that he can act on his own, uh, which well, he's about to do with immigration. Well, I mean, it's all in the details, right? He can act on his own if it's legal for him to act on his own. He can act on his own if it's illegal for him to act on his own. I mean, we have a government of limits. Right. He seems to not understand this. Yeah. And he's putting this under attack more than any other American president. I can remember all I work for uh, Ronald Reagan and for a little while for Gerald Ford in a much lower capacity. Presidents push the envelope. You try to get a little more power. Every president likes to think they've expanded the power of the presidency a bit. A bit right. This president is completely ignoring separation of powers. I mean, it, it's like it doesn't exist. And for a guy who claims to be a constitutional law professor, it's astounding. Sure. This is the least adherence to the Constitution I've seen in any American president oh. since I don't know when. And he says he's going to act alone. And look, presidents may do this to indeed keep us more safe. But when it pertains to the border, we're now hearing stories of uh, illegals crossing in with ties to terror. How concerned right. are you that he's going to act alone if nothing is done? It's been five and a half years. <laughs> he says he's going to act alone. It reminds me. Wait, 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 wait. We're not a monarchy. <laughs> a long time ago, we decided you don't act alone, Mr. President. You act within the laws set by Congress, within the interpretations given by the Supreme Court. It may be frustrating, but those limits have been placed on you to protect us. I mean, there seems to be something going on with regard to the Supreme Court decision on Hobby Lobby. Well, now the Supreme Court and the Republicans are waging a war on women. So it's not about affirming religious liberty. With regard to the borders, after ignoring the borders for the last five years, right, to right. now say, well, now I'm going to take executive action. Well, where has been the executive action in terms of law enforcement? Yeah, I mean, the, the reality is uh, he should have been taking action uh, years ago to seal up our borders, to make our borders secure. That isn't anti-anyone. That's just proper security. People should not be allowed to cross our borders without being identified. If people can cross your borders without being identified, some good people can come in, some really nice people can come in, and very, very dangerous people can come in. It's like leaving the door of your house open. And just saying anybody can come in if they want to come in. Sure. I mean, it, it, when you just look at the images from South Texas, if you've got eight year old kids coming in, uh, you know, pretty much just walking in, you've got to figure anybody, including terrorists or people who, uh, it, it, who have the, ill the, intent. The, the, major, not hard. the major focus of se sealing our borders should be the national security of the United States. A modern, mature country does not allow anybody to walk in without being identified. Almost every country in the world requires you to identify yourself when you come into that country perfectly logical, sensible thing to do, and the only way we can be secure. Mm -hmm. Right. Let's talk about uh, taking away the options and the means to keeping people safe. Stop and frisk has been reduced. Crime seems to be increasing. What's your take on well, this? You know, uh, and is that the case right now, or is that what we could be looking at? I mean, at? if you ask me what do I think the long-term trend is, I think it's a, it's a dangerous one. If you ask me just about the last couple of weeks, crime ha actually has an increase. Shootings have increased. In New York City, we're talking about Yeah, in New York right? City. Now... Commissioner Bratton knows this as well or better than I do. He probably taught me this. When shootings increase, very shortly thereafter, murders increase. Mm -hmm. Because what's happening when you're shooting, right? You're just missing. So when shootings increase, what that indicates is there are more guns on the street than there were before, which would be the natural result of cutting back on stop and frisk. So if shootings increase, there are more guns out there. People are using them more. Those are going to result in murders if you don't get, if you don't get on top of it quickly enough. Now, uh, the mayor is very lucky to have an enormously uh, talented p police commissioner, uh, Bill Bratton, who is on top of this. And if there's any chance to stop it, he'll stop it. So it's a trend. It's a dangerous one. It could go in the wrong direction, but it's still midterm in the trend that he could he could reverse it. He reversed it for me several times. So let's see if you can reverse it for him. If you read The New York Times, then you would believe that stop and frisk is somehow illegal and unconstitutional. Is stop and frisk illegal and unconstitutional? No. Stop and frisk done correctly, you know this, stop and frisk done correctly, if you have um, reasonable suspicion that the person is committing a crime, you can stop him, you can ask him questions. It's stop, question, and frisk. 
is really the right way to describe it. How many right. more people will have to die, though, before and, they and get back to Here's the thing the New York Times it. says also that's totally crazy. They say it's not effective. <laughs> well, it, not effective. If you're going to search thousands and thousands of people, believe me, they don't carry sure. guns. They don't carry guns. So um, we started it. Uh, Bill Bratton and I started Stop and Frisk. Uh, Mayor Bloomberg and Ray Kelly expanded it, used it a lot more than we did, actually. And look at the results. Murder is down 80 percent, 80 percent. Murder in New York, three and a half times per capita murder in Chicago. And we have the same gun control laws, same gun control laws. We enforce them strict, strictly. People argue about that. Yes or no, should we? But the same gun control laws. What's the difference? Why is New York three and a half times less in terms of murder rate than Chicago? Because we go out in the streets and we take the guns away from the criminals. They're less reluctant to do that. They're more reluctant to do that in other places. Well, let's just hope this crime wave doesn't continue, unfortunately. Well, this, is, this is a very, very big warning sign and a real test about Mayor de Blasio. Is he, Absolutely. Is he an ideologue or is he a pragmatist? And we're going to find out. We will. Well, you would know you had the job for a very long time. Rudy Giuliani, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor.